Nebraska versus Purdue. This is your preview and prediction video for the 2022 version of this game. Nebraska comes into this game with a two-game winning streak, something we didn't think was possible, but they beat Rutgers last week and earned their first road conference win for the first time since 2018. That seems like a long time. Well, it is a long time. I'm John Johnston, Corn Nation. Please subscribe to my channel and like this video so more people see it, and I feel better about myself, and you will too. So Nebraska comes into this game as a 13-point underdog, and the last time that Nebraska won as a double-digit dog on the road was something like 2005. I, that's so long ago. Uh, that's so long ago. It seems unbelievable, but I'm not going to take the time to look it up, and we'll just go with it. And before I start the rest of this video, I want to say this: I thought about doing like a stats comparison and looking at you know defensive stats versus offensive stats and stuff like that, and I really realized that it's kind of worthless because Nebraska's team has changed so much. From the beginning of the season, where we were under Scott Frost and Eric Trinander, to where we are now. And I, if, if Purdue fans are going to just look at the stats, they're going to think our defense is completely terrible off the wall. And I think you've seen the change that happened, at least on the defensive side of the ball, by the time that Eric Trinander was fired and Bill Bush took over. I mean, we've seen drastic changes. We've seen a complete mentality change turnaround. We've seen a team that actually appears to give effort all the time. Uh, if you want to talk about personnel, Malcolm Hartzog, a true freshman, has become kind of a signature guy in the backfield. And at the beginning of the season, we really didn't even know anything other than he exists. So there's a massive turnaround from the beginning until now. And you can take all the stats about Nebraska and throw them out the window. Having said that, what's going to happen in this game? Have you watched Purdue play football? Have you watched Nebraska play football? I think when Nebraska's defense goes into this game, uh, they're going to have to do a couple things. First of all, they're going to have to keep everything in front of them because Purdue is going to score their points. They have Charlie Jones. He was a transfer from Iowa where he was clearly wasting his time because they don't have an offense, and he's basically resurrected his career and, I don't know, probably propelled himself into the NFL draft somewhere. But he already has this season 600 yards and, what, uh, seven TDs, and he is a dynamic player. And that guy and their tight end, uh, Payne Durham, I think he has four touchdowns, those are the two guys to look for in producing for Purdue. In other words, scoring touchdowns, gaining yardage, picking up first downs. They don't have much of a running game. They probably will against us because we're going to play our defense, I don't know, 4-2-5 maybe, let's say. And we're going to try to keep the backfield so that everything stays in front of us, probably more zone than normal. But up front, we're going to do what we call GATA. And that is an acronym, G-A-T-A, -A, stands for Get After Their Asses. There's probably a very nice acronym way that, you know, get aggressive something, I don't give a shit. You're going to have to see, what, what you really want to see in this game for Nebraska is you want to see O'Shawn Mathis earn his nil money. So we want to see like, I don't know, four sacks out of O'Shawn Mathis. That would be good. I'm calling it right now. O'Shawn Mathis, go get four sacks. That would be good. Because Purdue has something that the previous two teams we played, two victories, they have something that those teams didn't have, and that is a quarterback in Aiden O'Connell. And he's a fairly decent quarterback, uh, completes 66% of his passes, 10 touchdowns, 4 interceptions. It's not an utterly fantastic TD to int ratio, but it's pretty good. And like I said, uh, Purdue is going to score their points. So in Nebraska defense, keep everything in front, get aggressive up front. Don't give Aiden O'Connell time to sit back in the pocket and pick us apart. On offense, I know that everybody out there is going to say, oh, we want Nebraska to run the ball and run the clock, and we want to keep the ball away from Purdue's awesome scoring offense. Unfortunately, that's not reality. If you've seen Nebraska's offense, what you've seen is an offensive line that can't block, uh, they can't block a JV team. Let's be honest. 
they're not they're not good enough up front to just run the ball on every play with Anthony Grant and let him gain yardage on his own. It's just not going to happen. So Mark Whipple, offensive coordinator Mark Whipple, just needs to mix it up. And I think he does a good job of that. I know people probably are like, we need to run the ball more. That's neat, but it's not reality. Like I said, he has a very good quarterback, Casey Thompson, who reads the defense very well, and he has exceptional receivers. You know, the Thompson to Trey Palmer connection is probably the thing that wins this game for Nebraska. And you got Travis Vokalik, Marcus Washington, Oliver Martin, Isaiah Garcia Castaneda decided to put his name in the transfer portal. He's not around. Tommy Hill, who was a cornerback, is now a wide receiver. Maybe we'll see him make some plays on the offensive side of the ball. But I think that you that key there is mixing it up, getting the ball out quick. And if you're an offensive lineman and you can't block the guy in front of you, hold him. We're going to get some holding calls. And that's better than Casey Thompson getting hit, getting injured, coughing up the ball, or throwing dumb passes that get intercepted because they turn into ducks in the air. I would love to say eliminate the turnovers and dumb penalties, but... You're going to have to accept, I think, that those are just part of who we are this season. We're going to have to work our ways around them. I think Nebraska is perfectly capable in winning this game because I would, when you look at our team, I do think we have, we have a lot of talent. We have a receiving core I, that is the envy of a lot of other teams. I think there's one more thing that's going on right now. You see, I have the whole brain injury, fatigue, headache thing going on all the time. And when I get overwhelmed with things, I sit back and I start to meditate, right? And I'm like, mm, go big red. And then I listen to the universe. And the universe in the last few days have been telling me that there's a 180 turnaround happening in Nebraska football. The universe has felt that we've experienced enough pain in our lives. The karma, goodness, is on our way. And instead of watching our team lose in all the most horrible, heinous ways possible, we're going to start watching them win in exciting ways, such as Trey Palmer returning a punt for a touchdown. I don't even know when the last time that happened is. But I think that that's going to be the key to the game, a special team's touchdown on a punt return, not a kick return. We don't bother with those anymore. So I'm picking 45 to 42 Nebraska. I do think it's just going to be offense, wing zinging, balls in the air everywhere, score points, fun, and then we're all going to have like this massive breakdown because Nebraska is going to be behind with, with only a few minutes left when Trey Palmer catches that punt and turn, returns it for the TD that wins the game. That's how I see this game shaking out. I'm John Johnston. Coordination. Go Big Red. Trey Palmer returning a touchdown for a punt. Such as Trey Palmer. <laughs> Such as Trey Palmer returning a punt for a touchdown. <laughs>